Let's All right, it is 10.30, so we're going to get started. Hey, welcome everybody to MacFest Day 2. Woo! 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 Yes, it is early, so thank you guys for coming to our panel. It's really early for us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for those of, uh, of you guys who don't know, we are TreeSkull. We do gaming analysis, philosophy, history, pretty much anything that you can stick a dick joke in. <laughs> uh, that is what we do. And um, occasionally memes. Yeah, that's true, yes. Yeah. Memes, memes as well. Um, and anime, but on a different channel. That's true, yeah. We're also, uh, uh, we have a second channel called Bonsai Pop. Uh, we just hit 100,000 subscribers on that. Um, Tree Skull is sitting around 950,000 subscribers. Um, we've been working to get it up to a million for the past year or so. Got plans for this year. It's gonna be a good year. It's gonna be a good year on both channels. Um, we're excited about it. But today, we are talking about music and how it works with YouTube videos. So because it's Magfest. Yes, exactly. Because, <laughs> it, because it's Magfest. So before we start, uh, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Grant. I'm the lead host of Tree School. Uh, if you watch our videos, you will probably see my face most of the time, and that's me. Yep. <laughs> uh, I'm Mike on Tree School. I do uh, editing, production, um, music, music, scripting, <laughs> like yeah, pretty much everything except being on camera. Uh, and I also do the music for almost every single video. So uh, that's yeah. That's why he's going to be talking the most. Yeah. yeah. And I'm the I do the face stuff on Bonsai Pop. I'm mm -hmm. the I'm the dirty weep. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm Tyler. I uh, also I do pretty much everything Mike does except for not the music. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're the two behind the scenes guys on Tree School that nobody ever sees, except for on stream. I do stream for us. Yes, and you're, uh, he's also the main behind the stream guy, or behind the screen guy on Bonsai Pop yeah. as well. He's my biggest co writer on that, I would yeah. say. And I'm Ryan, and I do everything that all of them do. We <laughs> <laughs> all have the exact same job. We're not yeah. redundant, I swear. <laughs> I write, edit, I'll, I'll do music on the rare chance that Mike doesn't do it. I'll host videos occasionally. Mm -hmm. The whole nine yards. Yes. Yeah. So, um, music is, at least to me, it is the most important part of any piece of film. And when it comes to using it, not using it, what you're going to use, how you want to set the mood, how you want to set the tone, if you want to make a meme, anything like that, music is the most important part of it because it's a universal language that speaks to everybody uh, in the same voice. So if you want to make a really serious scene uh, funny, it's much easier to do when you use music. It, it can just change everything about what you're trying to display. But from a technical standpoint, music starts with the voiceover. So what you want to do, um, and this is this is you know technical stuff for creators. If you're interested, uh, we try to keep what you're looking at right now is our voiceover, and it just looks like a big chunk of green because that's what it is. But it, doesn't but, start, it doesn't start that way. <laughs> exactly. Though. In fact, it starts as this little itty bitty tiny line because we record very, very softly. And what we do is we do a bunch of effects that I'm not going to drag you through. But if we zoom into this, you can see how different all these peaks and valleys are. But when you're zoomed out, you see that they're compressed into this nice solid grid like that and it just looks like a square. So what this is it's is a or uh, yeah, a very very <laughs> long rectangle. So this is all down at negative 6 because somebody named Ryan didn't do the negative three. <laughs> like we usually do, and I was expecting. So um, what I'm talking about there is is decibels, right? So music is, or all audio comes out in volume. Volume is measured in decibels. And what we try to do, generally, is keep it at negative three decibels. That's a very good, loud volume for YouTube. And it's, the, it's like the bass volume. And it right? works well with music in the background, too. Yeah. It works very well with music in the background because music is usually recorded at a relatively standard volume. So when you go into Premiere, like I will do if I can work a Mac, um, you got it. And then I will bring in a audio track. This is awful. I don't use Macs, so we're gonna we're gonna be going on this journey together, guys. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun. 
fuck, I'll just take some random song. Okay. We downloaded like 500 songs for this. Yeah. <laughs> all of them. I actually, I brought my entire music library that I use on our actual videos. We're going to be using music with an actual video. And I just, we wanted to show you the process. Let's blast the speakers. Is it? Is it? All right, let's they, see. It. No, I don't think so. They said they did. No, because the, 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 the music's not any louder than oh, negative okay. six. Okay. Okay. okay, so this is a standard music track. It's at a standard volume. Let me see if I can make that bigger for you. This mouse is terrible. Okay, so this right here. You should just move the middle up, so that way you have. You move mm -hmm. the middle up. And yeah. for the record, yeah, yeah, yeah. this yeah. video is on Untitled Goose Game. I'm <laughs> sure at least several of you are familiar. Uh, this video is about a goose who was trying to get yeah. people to mellow out and stop working so much. That's true. And that's kind of the vibe we're going for. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it doesn't get ridiculous at all, I swear. Yes. So as you can see, uh, so right here in the blue, this is our this is our vocal track, and underneath in the green is our music that we're going to be messing with. If I can use a Mac, okay. Uh, so right here, the music peaks over the decibels that our uh, voiceover would be on. So usually this is about where music sits, if you look at it visually. It's going to be somewhere between uh, probably negative nine and zero. So what I find is that if you put your music or your voiceover, your audio track, whatever, at negative three, which I'm going to do yeah, just add right three. now, yeah, because when did you start doing negative six, right? We're not going to talk about that. And why is it at negative six? <laughs> no, there, there was a phase where I I was messing. Up. Oh, were you? Oh, yeah. Were you experimenting? I was, I, I was experimenting with, okay. a, with a couple of things, including. So typically, voiceover wants to sit between negative three and negative six, because that's kind of the sweet spot. You don't want the lows to go much lower. That way, if you're kind of saying something softly into the mic, it still gets picked up. But then if you're screaming into the mic, you don't want it to blow somebody's eardrums. Because you know, if you're saying a joke and you want to kind of take a step back and try and be a little bit more subtle with it, you still want it to not break people's eardrums when the next line comes in and you start yelling and screaming about something. Unless you do want to break their eardrums, and we can show you how to do that if you're interested. Without actually breaking their eardrums? You can yeah. break people's eardrums and they're like, that was way too loud, but it's actually the exact same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just very intense. So, so again, uh, music, usually what I do is I can, I'll show you how it sounds normal. To two neighbors, what may seem like two people who are in that's too much, right? Music's too loud, it's coming in conflict with, with the voiceover. So what I do is I go over here to volume, and I generally, my rule of thumb is negative 18 dB, which is even louder than a lot of people like to have their music in their videos. I like to keep it there, because that way you can set a certain theme. And yeah, people we, will we like it. it to be a little more than background music. Yeah, we want it to be part of the it's video. Part not, of the video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's see how that sounds. Enjoying leisurely activities is, in reality, a plea for help. And Goose answers the call. Look at this gentleman reading the newspaper in his backyard. Tea on the table beside his hat. Slippers on his feet. Okay, so as you can see, it's it's like right there in the background. It's not very invasive, but you can hear the piano keys and pretty much everything that you would want to give the atmosphere. Uh, this song does not match with the atmosphere, but no. we're gonna be playing. We're gonna be playing around with that. We're talking about technical stuff right now. We're gonna do fun we're, stuff. We're gonna try to make this video be very serious and then very funny and then very awkward. And yes. All with music. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna take you on a journey. Okay. So uh, one of the other things I wanted to show you guys that is like super duper helpful is um, let's see what this song Glitterati. That sounds good. Okay, we'll take that one, and this is good because it's very different from. Oh my God, Grant. Just drag it in. I did drag it in. There, there it is. It, it just went, went in. It went in. <laughs> you got your Glitterati, dude. Okay. Yeah. It's All a right, great so, name. So Glitterati is super loud. You can tell just because it's like peaking on everything. But that's because it's from Epidemic Sounds. So I'm just going to drop the volume on this before it like 
blows your head off like uh, Indiana Jones. Um, all right. Let's try negative 22. That might be so Wake up to the world he lives in. This bar is a symbol of decay, and yet... There so is hope. Mess around a couple it, that know, understands little, Goose's uh, plights and offers their support. Not all is lost. Not everyone turns a blind eye. And with that newfound Even that's a little bit quiet. It's a little quiet, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless... unless well, uh, it's hard to tell because we don't have headphones on. <laughs> I know. I don't... You don't audio, You don't edit music with well, headphones. You, okay, yeah, but it's hard to tell because it's coming from over there and not here. <laughs> Not that the audio isn't good, because it's amazing. It's amazing. Port. Goose helps the old man see the others, or wake up to the world he lives in. That's this ball. Actually, negative 18 is working really well. Yeah. I should have just gone with my rule. Okay, so we have this one song with like piano, and it's very like dramatic. Roses, they don't understand that these simple ideas of property and ownership are tearing them apart. <laughs> So, so there's a lot of ways to transition between two songs, right? And transitioning between songs has a lot to do with how your video will come off or how a video will come off. So there's the stop abrupt where you just cut right into a song and it just drops everything. And what that does is it automatically focuses somebody's ear on exactly what the person is saying. So I will show you guys that. It's Break the woman's base and getting the woman to... It can, it can be very good for jokes. Um, Clip the man's prized roses. They don't understand that these simple ideas of property and ownership are tearing them apart. Okay. So that's where I'm going to cut the audio, and I'm, I'm going to drag it in here so that it's in the middle of like a piano section, so it doesn't, because it was naturally dropping off there. That's another thing you might find if you're doing this ever, is that you'll put a song in, and it will just naturally peak and flow the way that you want it to. I love when that happens. It's right, okay, it, okay, it just stop. makes your work a lot easier. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking about like nerdy shit. Okay. Don't um, understand that these simple ideas of property and ownership are tearing them apart. Alright, so just for emphasis, I'm going to turn this up a little bit so you can hear what I'm doing. And, okay. Oh god, Grant. What? It's so horrible. It's just a Mac, dude. Oh no, it's the mouse. It's not even yours. That's not even my mouse. Okay, here we go. It's still your fault, though. Decent getting the woman to clip the man's prized roses. They don't understand that these simple ideas of property and ownership are tearing them apart. And so the anti-goose signs rise. And goose moves on. Un okay. So there you go. So you have the stop. It's a little bit more dramatic than it would normally be. And then this is where you could... Accepted and unappreciated, like every true artist in their time. Goose then traverses through a household and... So now if you notice that this... It kind of makes it seem like it's going to be the end of the video. Now that's something that you don't want to do in the middle of the video. Because <laughs> people will start clicking off and you're going to lose all your watch time. Uh, so... I don't, I don't know exactly what it... Like, maybe it's because it has that kind of like oversaturated lo-fi like it's got that radio. like it's got that like we are happy yeah yeah we're right leaving now sort of feel it's sort of like it's sort of like, it's sort of like a full house ending <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah also don't use full house music they will copyright you immediately it's true we uh, used like three seconds of it yeah for, for a joke, joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's stop with some technical stuff for now and take a look at the video clip that we have for you and then we're going to mess with it. We're going to use like a minute of this yes. clip. And we're going to emotionally it. manipulate it for you. Uh, so this is the bear video without any audio. Onward Goose goes and I go with Zay to spread the message of change to two neighbors. What may seem like two people who are enjoying leisurely activities is in reality a plea for help. And Goose answers the call. Look at this gentleman reading the newspaper in his backyard. T 
tea on the table beside his hat, slippers on his feet. Despicable! Can't you see what Goose sees? A societal drone in pain? This man reads the paper with such fervor and terror he is constantly watching around himself in paranoia. This is what the news of our time does. It creates anxiety. Look at his face! He does not heed the honking! I've never seen a more true form of fear. So take his newspaper, we shall. But that's not enough. You can't just be ignorant to the world either. So we take his slippers. Get out there. Get your feet dirty. Join the revolution towards which we waddle. The revolution of change! But no. Despite this man's paranoia, he won't go against the grain. He's been brought up by the machine, and the machine owns him. Look at how angrily he throws his neighbor's belongings off his property. Okay. So you get the point. You know, I think there's a great microcosm for exactly the way our channel is. We're sitting up here, like, fucking giggling. And everybody's like... Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, we think we're great. I haven't seen this since we released it, and it's still so funny to me. Yes. I love this. If you guys haven't played Goose Game, you definitely should. I think it's on sale, and that makes it the perfect price. All right, so as you can tell, like this intro section here, it's like we're trying to be goofy, but we're also giving off a uh, very like deeply socio-politically economic message. So um, normal for, <laughs> normal for yes. Yeah, we, we always like go between very goofy and like kind of serious. Like we want someone to learn something, but also like be laughing and not take it too seriously. Yeah, it's somewhere between a dick joke and a uh, philosophy lecture. Yeah. Um, so. There's a lot of ways to go about that specific section, right? So you can have, uh, you know what? Let's just show you instead of tell you. So I have some epidemic sounds tracks that I'm going to use first. Oh yeah, by the way, we use epidemic sound for most of our music. I would highly recommend their services. Yes, they're very, they're very good. Um, it is, it is a subscription thing. So you don't have to do something like that. It's the safest thing to do. Right. Because nobody's going to copyright you. Um, but there is like copyright free music on YouTube and there's sites for that. Like you can do it without. Yes. And, and we did for years. For years and years. Um, and I also, like, obviously I prefer using video game music because the spectrum of video game music uh, goes from, like, metal to lo-fi beat to uh, dark wave to, you know, it's just, it's, it's everything that you could possibly want. But you always got to wonder if Nintendo's going to come knocking at your door and taking all your money away. So if you want to put your mind at ease, I recommend using a mixer, hiding it very cleverly. <laughs> that didn't work. Oh yeah, it was negative 18. Okay, so we're gonna start off with something a little bit epic. Um, and we'll just start right here. Reality, a plea for help. And Goose answers the call. Look at this gentleman, reading the newspaper in his backyard. Tea on the table beside his hat, slippers on his feet. Oh Despicable! You Can't you here? see what Goose sees? Oh, yeah, a societal in. drone in pain? This man reads the paper with such fervor and terror he is constantly watching around himself in paranoia. This is what the news of our time does. It creates anxiety. Look at his face! He does not heed the honking! I've never seen a more true form of fear. So take his newspaper, we shall. But that's not enough. You can't just be ignorant to the world either. So we take his slippers. Get out there. Get your feet dirty. Join the revolution towards which we waddle. The revolution of change! But no. Despite this man's paranoia, he won't go against the grain. He's been brought up by the machine, and the machine owns him. Look at how angrily he throws his neighbor's belongings off his property. <laughs> Yeah. Is that the work of a happy man? No, it is a cry for help. Okay, so that part right there. Does anybody want to sing the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> like, that was very patriotic feeling. So that part right there was one of those really good spots to just cut and fly. Of a happy man? No. Okay. Also, welcome to my life. Of a happy man? There we go. <laughs> yeah. And then we're going to cut 
out here. All right. So what I'm going to show you, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a build or a rise, and then it's going to drop. So yeah, the, that like shatter, we're building up to that, and then I don't think uh, I don't the think the shatter already happened. We're building up to oh. you saying I I hate that this doesn't work. Uh, the way don't I listen to me. Uh, well, the way that you say no. Yeah, it's like it, a perfect yeah, cut. He, he's stopping on no. Yeah. Oh. And it's going to really highlight now. Mm. If you're already a musician, working with scoring uh, video tr is really good because there is a beat to the way that people talk. Uh, and if you work with the same person for a really long time, you'll get to know the cadence of their voice. And after a certain amount of time when you're listening to a voiceover, you can really feel where their peaks and valleys are. And you, you just, you, you kind of work the music into their personal flow. And you, you can see it right here. So hopefully the build doesn't overshadow it too much. She and the machine owns him. Look at how angrily he throws his neighbor's belongings off his property. Is that the work of a happy man? No. It is a cry for help. <laughs> <laughs> so then you can go back into, you know, the epic music, right? Yet, when help comes, the man won't... Yeah, go back so that they yeah. can hear the... Yeah. yeah. If I could just get some pinpoint movement, that would be amazing. Is that the work of a happy man? No. It is a cry for help. Yet, when help comes... The <laughs> right, so then you get the, you get that jump. And everybody, like, it, you want to do stuff like that sometimes because uh, with YouTube, it's all about retaining people's attention span, retaining their attention span, retaining it. Because on the internet, people, first of all, they don't care. Uh, and then they see another video or they see a comment or they're like, oh, yeah, I was supposed to check that Twitter message. Like, shit. And then they close down YouTube and that messes up your watch time. And it's like a permanent check on that video. It's a tiny check, but it's permanent forever. But if there's like a lot of them, it, uh, yeah. it can do things. Yes. The big point is that stops like that will keep the viewer It, it recenters the focus. So mm -hmm. if you're... If you play a long, so a long music clip, so in this instance, I mean, Dude, this the, the song is going for a minute and a half. That's not saying that the song is actually going to be going for that long if we had a finished copy. But if a song is going for too long, a lot of times it'll kind of put the viewer at a lull. And they'll just kind of get used to what's being said. And then when you kind of do an abrupt cut like this, it, it almost snaps you out of that and then it's like, whoa. And it really emphasizes, in this case, there's a question being asked, and then the answer is kind of that, like, whoa moment. Or, in, like, as another example, he could have done it on the glass shatter. That's and true. And kind of used the glass shatter as, like, a, like a whoa moment. Like, a wake just up. Threw, yeah, like, through the glass shatter, and then use that to even change music. Because these, uh, these jump cuts, I really like to use them to actually switch mm -hmm. switch what what song is being played. It's an oral slap in the face. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's like, wake up, keep paying attention to us. <laughs> Come on. All right. click off. <laughs> yeah, please don't click off. No. Okay, so I'm gonna no. extend this a little bit. So what I've grabbed here is a song that uh, we use, or well, I use in almost every single one of our videos. It's, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever played the Senran Kagura series. But uh, I recommend them. And uh, they, they have some really, really good music. So um, we're going to go from this epic upbeat here. Is that the work of a happy man? No. It is a cry for help. Yeah. OK. For help. There we go. And then we're going to start the arrow. No, no, no. I have, like, I have to listen to the exact. If I was going, it, it. You do you. You do you. <laughs> so so, so uh, Tyler was just telling me to use arrow keys to find the spot. You you have to listen for it. You have to listen to when it would sound right for the next music to come in. Um, so I'll put this at a negative 17 because I want to make sure that people are actually hearing it. Um, okay, so we're gonna go from this epic thing into Grant's pausing. Man, no. 
It is a cry for help. Yet, when help comes, the man won't take it. The woman is no better. We try to break down the walls of her life, yet she continually puts them back up. We show her new ways to think creatively, and while she's somewhat accepting of these ideas, she cannot let go of her materialistic ways. Right, so we're still talking about the same weird, like, kind of deep, heavy topic of materialism. Uh, but if you change the music from this, like, epic Game of Thrones getting ready for the battle thing into this weird lounge music, all of a sudden it's not as heavy as it would seem, right? So y you can't... You can't force a mood on people for 15 minutes. Yeah, you gotta give your audience a break to like yes, relax. Yes, levity, <laughs> exactly. And you, but you can talk about the same thing and have it have an entirely different atmosphere simply by changing the music. I hope it's, I hope it's coming across, because the music seems a little Are you guys hearing the music uh, for this That would have been a song? good yeah, thing is to it, ask is the mix? We okay. <laughs> okay, I'm, All right, we're me, getting some nods. Let me raise the volume on the mix a little yeah. bit. Thankfully, I have total control over that, so. <laughs> of a happy man? No, it is a cry for help. Yet, when help comes, the man won't take it. The woman is no better. We try to break down the walls of her life, yet she continually puts them back up. We show her new ways to think creatively, and while she's somewhat accepting of these ideas, she cannot let go of her materialistic ways. Neither can the man. Goose tries to help, but it is only in vain. Despite getting the man to break the woman's vase and getting the woman to clip the man's prized roses, they don't understand that these simple ideas of property and ownership are tearing them apart. Okay, so that's another good place to stop and then emotionally manipulate it again. Man to break the woman's vase and getting the woman to clip the man's prized roses, they don't understand. I'm gonna cut it right there. Prized roses, they. There we go. So this will probably be an even better one for you guys to see the, the dry cut. Getting the woman to clip the man's prized roses, they don't understand that these simple ideas of property and ownership are tearing them apart. There you go. <laughs> so so you, get, you get a bunch of information out, right? And you ease them into it with this lounge music uh, from a dirty game. And then you cut it there, you hit them with the big idea, and then you bring it back into the music. So I don't even know what's coming up. It's we, basically like if you were zoning out for that entire portion, property and ownership, you got it. Yeah, you, you got the important part. <laughs> property and ownership. Okay, so uh, let's, do some, let's do some jazz. You guys like Phoenix, right? Yep, everybody yeah. loves Phoenix, right? Thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> so we'll do some, we'll do some nice Capcom Phoenix Wright jazz. You're telling me a bunch of people came to how to do music on a YouTube video, and they're not music nerds. All right. I will adjust the volume for the music as it plays this time. You might want to start at like negative 15 though. Mm, I'll start at negative 7, that'll be fine. ...are tearing them apart. And so the anti-goose signs rise. And goose moves on. Unaccepted and unappreciated. Like every true artist in their time. Goose then traverses through a household and across the streets to a pub. Here we see some of the worst society has wrought upon this town. A bouncer, so unable to bend the rules the for anyone, right? even the feathered messiah this pub desperately needs. Do. A waitress so intent on her work that any distraction is an upset. A man so focused on escapism he'd rather play games alone than spend time with others or wake up to the world he lives in. This bar is a symbol of decay, and yet there is hope. A couple that understand... Okay, so as you can see, you can really lead people along with it. You can go from these big, heavy, heavy highs uh, to these nice, like, jaunty strolls through your dialogue and then bring them back into, like, a... Yeah, to, to really hitting jokes, to really hitting important pieces that you want people to get. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot you can do with music, yeah. but you can't quite get across necessarily with voiceover or like you, you can convey a lot more even though there's no words <laughs> yeah and, and I think I think it would be easy to say that with YouTube now 
a lot of content has gotten stagnant to a certain degree, right? Uh, for the, the Let's Play scene, for example, uh, it's very hard to break into YouTube as a Let's Player now because there's millions and millions and millions and millions of Let's Players and the ones that are very successful are already successful and they're going to stay that way and it's very hard to reach that level. So I think one of the next things that people are going to be doing to differentiate themselves from others is going to be heavy use of music and themes. Mm -hmm. um, on our anime channel Bonsai Pop, we did a video on Cowboy Bebop uh, or not? Uh, well, we did do a video on Cowboy Bebop, but I actually was wanted to talk about the one we did on Samurai, Samurai Champloo. Yeah. So, uh, if you guys have seen Samurai Champloo uh, or anything by Watanabe, yeah, uh, Watanabe. Watanabe. Watanabe is a very musical uh, guy, and uh, most of his anime that he creates are based around some kind of music. The Samurai Champloo was based around hip hop, and. Well, before I did YouTube, I played in punk bands my whole life. Um, I'm a strings guy. Uh, so I was able to listen to the beat, and I never really listened to hip hop that much. Um, I do a lot more now. But when we did that Samurai Champloo video, I was like, you know what would be really cool is if I listened to the soundtrack of Samurai Champloo while I was doing my voiceover and did it to the beat of that soundtrack. And then I tossed it to Ryan, actually. Because you were out of town. <laughs> you had like, <laughs> this poor guy had like a four day panic attack, right? Because I've, <laughs> I've been doing music for years at this point. And I was like, all right, I need you to listen to the cow, uh, not cowboy, but I keep wanting to say the Samurai Champloo soundtrack. And I need you to find me lo-fi hip hop that is at the same uh, beats per minute as the Samurai Shampoo soundtrack, please, and then overlay that so it sounds right. And he pulled it off really well. Really well. Really well. well. He was freaking out though. I was in the office that day, and it was, Dude, it was not a good time. Do you, think so, do you think we could show an example if I search? Sure. It? If yeah, it's Samurai yeah, Shampoo, yeah, sure. Talk, so, so, talk so basically, the the thing is with with a video like it. With a nor so Goose, there was no real musical uh, identity when we wrote the script, when we created the video itself with editing and with voiceover. It's very different with, uh, with some of these anime videos that we do because a lot, like Watanabe, is very heavily focused on music in his videos. Or in his uh, in his anime, yeah, their videos, uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so then, they're just better than ours. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, so then in our videos we try and mimic that. So we try and really tie in the whole idea of music in with the voiceover and with the editing. So then at certain stages where the hip hop would kind of ebb and flow, we try and take the voiceover and take the editing through that same kind of journey. Yes, yeah. if uh, we can find that like Treesicle is more. Got. Creating the, you know, creating what we want to tell with the script and with the editing, and then working with the music after the fact. So we kind of have two different trains of thought depending on the style of video for which channel we're working on. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so this is a video about an anime, and this is probably not the first image that you would expect in a video about anime, but this is what we did. The word shampoo is an Okinawan phrase that, when not referring to food, means improvised or made up as you go along. So it should come as no surprise that Samurai Shampoo is a bunch of stories chronologically jumbled together that mostly have nothing to do with one another except they star our main trio, Mugen, Jean, and Fu. The first 20 or so episodes are loosely connected by something resembling a story and only be- Right, so we started off with that and then what did you want to show them, Tyler? You said that there was a- If I can remember where it is, the part where like- so the that big thing in that, in that voiceover, yeah, like you're like really, in, in the voiceover, it, you, if you play the beginning again, it, it? yeah, if you play the beginning again, it's very subtle, but you can kind of hear these, these kind of peaks and valleys in his voiceover where he's going along with the beat. And let me tell you, matching a musical number that is not copyrighted to a song that he was listening to that was copyrighted is not easy. <laughs> I would not recommend it. I'd say use a copyright free music song whatever when you're it. recording. <laughs> because that was 
terrible. Unless you're very, very uh, versed in music and music theory. Which I'm not. Which he's not. But you, you pulled it off. Yeah. Uh, should you we wanna, play it again? Or I mean, we could just, let's just like drop something in the, like right in the middle or something. Well, I was struggle between talent with street learned skill versus those brought up through the academy or the institution meant for the elite. Meanwhile, Gene demands the honor and civility of the early Edo era. <laughs> that slowly became extinct as the samurai class died off. He follows a romanticized Bushido code, but ever since he left the dojo, his only real connection to that lifestyle are those morals. He's the samurai that doesn't see any lord so fit was, to follow. That was so, our big hip hop video, so... And yeah. I, I, I wanna add, when, when, with that little like record scratch, you can use sound effects like that yeah. to change songs. So with the record scratch, it was kind of subtle there. And the, the two songs that I had used were very, very similar in terms of the, the beat of the song as well as just the, the tone, the, the, tone yeah. the feel, everything. And so with that little record scratch, it allowed me to basically just take two songs and then slap them together where like I listening to it again, I almost forgot what had happened because yeah. uh, <laughs> it, it just kind of flows. But then also with that, you don't, with, with songs like that, you don't even necessarily need sound effects to accomplish the same thing. You can almost overlap them and fade out of one and fade into another in order to keep the same tone, but move, move the video along. Uh, I wouldn't recommend keeping a single, single song, a single tone for too long in the video because of what Mike was saying earlier about yeah. losing interest, which is why we were emphasizing so much these jump cuts when we were showing you uh, the the goose game yeah. example. And if you play right, I think it's right here. Like you'll hear a pretty big difference in what was going on at the beginning versus now. At the end of episode 14, Koza's brother gets got by Jean. Koza thinks Mugen is dead, and so she decides to run away with the only man she has left to protect her. This dude. <laughs> Then Mugen stumbles out from death, kills Koza's only savior, and keeps hobbling while this poor girl realizes she has nowhere to go and no one to protect her in a cruel world. She begs Mugen to kill her, and then the episode just ends. But what happened to her? Samurai Shampoo doesn't care. It's never addressed again, does it matter? The show just keeps meandering forwards. Despite hating- yeah, see, see, like Ryan, again, like Ryan would love to tell you that he doesn't like doing music and he's not good at it, but he still managed to hit that like he listened to the cadence of the voice and I want I want you guys to listen to the kick when that when that song comes back in right the kick is the one that's gonna it's gonna be a, like a like that and he hit it right on the perfect part where I, I started speaking again. world she begs Mugen to kill her and then the episode just ends but what happened to her samurai shampoo doesn't care it's never addressed again does it matter the show just keeps meandering forwards despite hating each other at the beginning just, of their story just, by like, the end neither mugen or it's that like tiny difference of coming in at the right part to get people to refocus on the video and get back into the flow and it's something that a lot of people don't really even think about, but it ups the entertainment value of your video massively. Yeah, when you're watching a video, you're not like, damn, that was a really good music change. Like, nobody ever says yeah. that, <laughs> but it makes a huge difference. Yeah, yeah and I do want to say... Like, I think that's a really good spot to show that. Yeah, uh, like, a lot of people don't notice music, even though it's so important for the tone, and especially if you're doing, like, writing-heavy videos, Usually in your head you'll want to like, oh, I need to word this perfectly. I have to say it perfectly. I have to, and that is important to do that as well as possible. But a lot of the times, like, you can just put the right music under it, and you don't have to try so hard to grab people's attention and change their moods. You can just kind of let it flow and then put the music under it later, mm. mess it around, and it works a lot better. And that's yeah. part of the reason I like using video. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we, I mean, I, <laughs> the folder that I brought with me has 576 songs in and it. And we use them all every video. No, no. <laughs> sorry. Uh, but um, there are, there are definitely some songs that I use consistently. Um, 
We use the casino theme from Dead or Alive Extreme Volleyball all the time, because uh, that one's just great. It's like very good like lounging music. Um, but besides that, I try to always find new things or find a way to be able to sneak in video game music that people yeah. actually know. Like you want, you want some epic music? Dark Souls is a really good place to go. It is. Yeah. <laughs> but use it at your own risk. Like right. we are not condoning using video game music uh, or saying that that's the right way to go. But what helps is that people recognize it and sometimes they'll stick around through a part they necess wouldn't necessarily stick around through just to listen to that song yeah. and end up seeing a part in the video they wouldn't have seen and appreciating the video in a way that they wouldn't have. Yeah, that happened on our Akira video where we, what did you, you used uh, Hotline Miami music for Akira yeah. and it was like flawlessly perfect for that video. Yeah, it was it's, so it's, good. It's all synth wave, right? Yeah. So when you're doing a, a when you're doing a video about something from the 80s that's a little bit sci-fi, if you use synthwave music, which uh, if you're not familiar with the term, think like Daft Punk or the, the Tron soundtrack, the Disney Tron soundtrack, that's all synthwave music. Uh, and it just gives it this like 80s like, you know, that, that kind of feel. And uh, yeah, Hotline Miami, I knew that Hotline Miami had this 80s synthwave soundtrack. I was like, that would work beautifully with Akira and him flying down the street on his bike and like the lasers coming out. I mean, that already almost looks like Tron, Yeah, you know? So, and again, that's, that's what it comes down to is like theming the music with the video and the script and tying it all together into a bundle. And uh, so, and it, it's also based on the, the game itself. So, I mean, we cover video games. That, yeah. That's our thing. Well, on for, Tree School. For, yeah, yeah, on Tree School. So, yeah. when we first started creating videos, the, we weren't thinking about copyright necessarily. We were, it was a long time ago. Yeah, so I, again, I'm <laughs> not clear about this, younger. <laughs> but we were just making videos because we wanted to make videos. We, we, like, we were having fun together. We were just like, okay, let's make some videos. And so when we covered like a, a Mario game, we would use Mario music from the games that we were talking about because Nintendo specifically does a fantastic job with their music and kind of tying it in. Mm. It, it, so much Nintendo music is just iconic because of how it takes you back to their games. Mm. And a lot of good, good indie games do similar things. Undertale is the first game that comes to mind yeah. with fantastic fantastic music. Yeah, you say Megalovania, people know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so the great thing about indie games is that a lot of them, a lot of the developers just want their, want their names out there, so they love when people make videos. And so with certain indie games, not all of them, but certain developers will come out and say, use my music, use my game, use my assets, do whatever you want with it. And with those games, those are my favorites because then we could actually write the script kind of around a tone, the, the tone of the game itself, and then use the music from that game because the music- Because we're allowed to. Yeah, because <laughs> we're allowed to and the music fits exactly the tone what we're going for. Yeah. Uh, we, Grant mentioned Epidemic Sounds because that's I mean, that, that's what we've been using recently because it's a subscription service and they have a lar very large library. And but it's also you, easy to search too. Yeah. Like if you're on there and you're like, I want something epic, you just type in epic and then they give you 50 epic songs. And then, you know, usually what I'll do is I'll click on it and I'll be like, no, no. Okay, that's good. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And it, <laughs> the key the is picking the right song because with Samurai Champloo, that's a great example. I'm still fairly insecure about my musical ability because I'm not like Mike. Mike's been a, in a band for years. I don't really have any musical acumen. I don't. I don't know what what I'm doing. We played recorders in third grade. Yeah, we played recorders <laughs> in third grade. But I've been doing this for a couple of years. I I kind of. I pick apart videos in terms of how, how the voiceover is done, how the music is done. So it kind of, it gives me a direction and you know, the, the key to start is picking the right song. Mm. And then from there, 
it's you can manipulate it and you know the first dozen two dozen three dozen times that you do it it's not going to hit exactly how you want it to feel but after doing it time and time again you'll get to the point where you come away with a finished product of like of wow you just start you like now i can go in and and do music on a video and i'm i feel like it it comes away good whereas you know two years ago two and a half three years ago whenever i four years a long time a ago. A while ago when I started doing music, it was terrible. Like it was to the point where people would listen to it and I would have to go through and redo three quarters of the video. But that's the kind of the creative process. It takes a couple of minutes, it takes a couple of couple of times to, to yeah. really get it done. The, the best thing you can do, at least in my opinion, is if you want to learn how to score a video, go to your favorite YouTube channels and watch the videos that you like the most and listen to the music specifically. Like try to like, you know, like watch the video, but be aware of the music as opposed to being aware of the content, yeah. I guess. And you'll see what they're doing. And that gives you a really good idea. Like one of my favorite uh, Let's Players that has come up recently, he's a guy that does Dead by Daylight Let's Plays called Noob3 and his, uh, his videos heavily uh, have music in them that changes and makes you feel he does like funny music in horror games Which makes no sense, but it works really well and uh, it, it, it gave me a bunch of ideas of like how to change music to do things differently So that's what I recommend doing. Yeah, another guy is 8-Bit Ryan. He's a he's a let's player also That's kind of he's come up in the last couple of years uh, and yeah. he, he like he does a great job. He differentiates himself because of the music and because of the sound effects that he uses. So yeah, yeah, uh, I huge. noticed the sound effects with him. But he's also a musician as well. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's he's he's a, he's a drummer. But the other thing you might notice is that well, your favorite YouTubers aren't very good with music, or don't really use music, or. Once you start listening to it, it really does add another layer into your um, viewing experience, let's say. Uh, so Ryan spoke briefly about transitions. Um, and if you are using Premiere Pro, you have three audio transitions that are built right in. That's constant gain, constant power, and exponential fade. So if you know anything about key, uh, Exponential or constant power is very useful. What is key? So if it goes indoors. <laughs> so if a, if one song is in A major, and another song is in A major, and you cross those two songs, as long as they're around the same beat, you're not going to get too much dissonance between it. But if you're if you have a song which key is an A major and you try to cross it with something that is not a harmonic of that, you're gonna get like this horrible like it's gonna feel really weird. Alright. So let's, let's see what you're talking about. So I don't I don't have any songs that are specific right now to use this, but I'll show you how constant power works. Um, and basically it's just a crossfade. So think like a DJ turntable. You might, might want to mute the Voiceover layer. The voiceover? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Do <laughs> so that was that was a really quick one. But you can actually edit the crossfade, which is nice. So you can take it and you can extend it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend the jazz. So when he was talking about key, to be frank, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> um, I I don't I don't know you know A major A minor whatever I I try and go for just I don't know a similar sound a similar vibe and then Hope you don't a lot of those times okay so here we have we have the uh, Sunrun Kagura music that's going to crossfade into the Phoenix Wright music uh, that everybody loves and. So yeah, so that's how crossfade works. Um, and so now play it with the voiceover. Now play it with the voiceover. Yeah. Oh yeah, because the voiceover. It's, it's very like you could really, really tell that there's a change in music. Mm -hmm. And the woman to clip the man's prized roses. They don't understand that these simple ideas of property and ownership are tearing them apart. And so the. 
So the thing is that those two songs are just totally different. They're, they're totally different, but the voiceover allows you, you can use the voiceover to your advantage to create these transitions. Well, the other thing that works, though, is if you do have songs that are completely different, you can use exponential fade, which is a lot nicer than having to fade things by hand. You just put that there, and I'm making it, I'm making it bigger than normal. So for a more exaggerated effect. Yes, and I'll show you how it works. Basically, it fades in and fades out. Perfect. So that's a really nice, clean, smooth transition with music. And it's super easy. It's just a drag and drop. Uh, and then when we put the voiceover back in. Woman's bass and getting the woman to clip the man's prized roses. They don't understand that these simple ideas of property and ownership are tearing them apart. And that even works too, because when the music came back in, you get the crash symbol. Uh, which I'm sure everybody noticed. <laughs> they don't understand that these simple ideas of property so, and ownership. So the, it, like when you use the percussion to punctuate the punctuation, it really does. It has nice hits, and that's the kind of thing that keeps. It's like a highlight in a video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it just you want it to you want it to work. So we have ten minutes. If anybody has any questions, let's do some quick fire questions. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I do that with uh, uh, music, sound effects, all sorts of stuff. E even voice. Oh, oh, uh, sorry. Um, so what the question was was uh, if there's music that doesn't fit necessarily with the cadence or the beat, do I ever speed it up or slow it down? Um, but yeah, like uh, so we also have like fart sound effects, uh, <laughs> and if it's not the right fart, I'll slow it down. So instead of like a, it's like a. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> the the <laughs> trick is to maintain the audio pitch. So well, the, sometimes. Sometimes no, they don't, well, yeah, don't yeah, want to yeah. maintain but, the audio pitch. Well, sometimes. Because it, it depends so on the quality. Audition has, or uh, Premiere right. has a, has right a yeah, great little checkbox. Yeah. yeah. If you bring it up, it'll, it allows you to maintain audio pitch. So sometimes if you manipulate a song, if you change the audio, if you don't, click the little button that says maintain audio pitch, it'll really mess with how the song sounds. Sometimes if you click that, it'll really mess with how the song sounds. So, so we just so. we just sped it up 100%. And we didn't maintain the audio pitch. But it doesn't sound bad. No, yeah. it doesn't sound bad. With but voiceover, it, a lot of times, speeding it up will manipulate it a lot more. But if you do try to change, or maintain the audio pitch sometimes, it can like make it sound like <laughs> makes it sound like a LimeWire download from like 2005, <laughs> and sometimes has to render a little bit first because it knows it's going to be bad. Yes. <laughs> it's actually, not actually bad. that works. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll so sometimes it works. Sometimes it, it doesn't. It'll depend on the quality of the download. <laughs> um, Any other questions? Yeah. Nothing about you don't you don't want to ask about Phoenix Wright? <laughs> <laughs> Guess not. Am I the only one who played those games? Yeah. Uh, I've checked. Oh. Uh, yeah. So so Capcom, um, who? Oh, uh, is was a Phoenix Wright song from a jazz album? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so Capcom is one of my favorite companies when it comes to music. Uh, they did Bayonetta, they did um, Yakuza, uh, or no, Sega, Sega did Yakuza. That's my bad, my bad. <laughs> I believe in you. Dude. But yeah, um, when it comes to making like really awesome Japanese inspired jazz, Capcom is the way to do it. Uh, if you look at the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 soundtrack, that soundtrack is full of all kinds of amazing eclectic music. In fact, I use Marvel vs. Capcom 2 music all the time when I can, when it's applicable at least. Um, let's see if we can get some Marvel, because I would love to play us out on that. Um, if anybody, you want to get some more questions? Do we have any other questions? Yeah, do we have any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, you. In the blue. So the question is, do we boost Grant's vocals? 
to, so that the music doesn't drown them out? And the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so very much so. Yeah. When when uh, when Grant first does the voiceover, we do it with a very low gain. Yeah, it reason, doesn't look like that block at all. Yeah, so it's like a worm. It's I, tiny. I don't think we have any unleveled voiceover to show today. We don't. But um, it. <laughs> We record with a very low gain in a soundproof room, but initially when we started out, we we were storing some mattresses for a friend. So we used the mattresses that we stored, put a comforter on top of it, and then like a little door like on the back of it. Yeah, like a Japanese like mm -hmm. changing door. Yeah, it was like a full, yeah, Japanese. <laughs> yeah, it was a mattress floor. fortress yeah. basically. And so we record with a very low gain to avoid, to avoid noise. And then when we level it after the fact, that we have a bunch of, uh, of audition kind of effects that we use, that we, through trial and error. It's like found. a five step process. Yeah, and to, to really get it into a negative three to negative six decibel range. And then, can, so that way it's pretty pretty darn loud and it's kind of a normal, normal level for speakers because uh, music is typically what, negative nine to zero? Uh, whoa, when it, like on the track? On the track. Yeah, I mean, it's usually somewhere between like negative nine to zero. Because we, we want to keep it with normal music levels and then we lower the music significantly after the fact. So it, we kind of, we, long story short, we throw Grant's voiceover, we level it to a certain range, then we adapt the music levels to the voiceover after the fact. Yeah. And to, for uh, five minutes left, we got five minutes, guys. So, um, this year, I started uh, doing videos when we started Bonsai Pop Up, and uh, we started facing the voice. Yeah, I was facing, doing the, being on camera and doing the voice, and it took me a whole year to get my like personal sound profile done. Um, yeah, if you look at the first Bonsai Pop video versus the last one, well, maybe not the last one. We had some issues with the audio. On that yeah, one. we did. But that was second to last one. Yeah, uh, there's a pretty big difference in the quality of voiceover, and that's just sitting on. Uh, audition, which is this program right here. Uh, Every video making another tweak here, another tweak there, and then slowly but surely. Yeah, we're just messing with effects and messing with effects and trying to find the right EQ, like going in and let's look at the parametric equalizer. Where's that at? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a whole nother can of worms. Are there any other questions? <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I, think, I think we'll call it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, we got one, one more. more. Yeah. Oh, which specific track of Phoenix Wright was that? Let me see. Now I gotta find it. Well, isn't it in the... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it. yeah, yeah, it is. I think. Oh, no. I'm not just so... Court begins blue noise scale. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But yeah, if we don't have any other questions, uh, we're gonna be here the entire... Uh, festival. We have two more panels if you're interested in them. We're doing how to start a career as a non-traditional YouTuber and then we also have PC versus console. Yes. So, and we're bringing on like a bunch of friends like uh, Anthony had already said he'd come on, maybe Kid Icarus is going to come on. So yeah. it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Time. And we're just gonna, everybody in the crowd is just going to rage about PC versus console. It's going to be a whole debate. So, so that's tomorrow at 4.30 and then today at 7, 7 p.m. 7 we're doing how to start a career as a non-traditional yeah. YouTuber. And that one's going to be a lot less technical, a lot more Q&A. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we ap appreciate you coming out to this one. Yeah, thank one. you. We know yes. it was an early panel. And also very very technical technical <laughs> not super funny but it's cool <laughs> yeah thank you uh, guys. yeah and if you want to see us we do have a table but we haven't found it yet so <laughs> you, but our handler has found it yeah. and she's promised she will show it to us so you can either come up to us right now if you want the thing signed or talk to us or whatever or just tweet at us and we'll tell you where we are we also have exclusive bonsai pop prints with us that are for sale so if you're interested in those uh, they're cool yeah. they're really cool we got them I want one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Anyway, thank, thank you, you so everybody. much. Thank you.